today on an all-new Dr. Phil. Their son is 32. You got in my face screaming and yelling. You were really raging. Violent. We walk on eggshells around you because you'll blow up. And still lives at home. They think you're a moocher. I'm not a moocher. If you guys want me out, say so and I'll be out. You say you're bipolar. Is it so debilitating that you can't clean your room? I told them I didn't want any of that taken. I didn't want any film of it. Listen, if you don't want to deal with the truth, then don't be here. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. and Gary worked hard their entire lives, all while imagining that by now they would be quietly enjoying their golden years together. But instead, they say their lazy, mooching, 32-year-old son, Jeremy, <laughs> who's never lived away from home and refuses to leave, has ruined any hopes of that. According to Mom Kathy... Jeremy goes days without bathing, rarely leaves the house, spends up to 18 hours a day sleeping in his garbage-strewn room, and says she is the cause of all of his problems and failures. Oh. Kathy says Jeremy blames everyone and everything for why he can't get his life together. He's bipolar, he's depressed, his parents made him this way, and wait for it, the universe dealt him a bad hand. Now, they say they want him out of their house for good so they can move on with their lives and stop living in fear. Take a look. My 32-year-old son, Jeremy, lives at home with his father and I. I want my son to move out, get a place of his own. He just needs to have a life. Right. We can't have a full life because... He's here. To have to support our 32-year-old son, it disgusts me. Jeremy stays in his room 18 to 20 hours a day. His room is a pigsty. He'll take food, a meal in there to eat, and he'll leave the dishes in there for days. Garbage all over the floor. His bed's never made. It's a disaster. Jeremy did drop out of high school. He did not get a high school diploma. We tried to help him get his GED. He has never really contributed to any of the bills. Even his car will have to give him money for gas. It's really hard to make him do something he really doesn't want to do. Jeremy blames me for the state of his life right now. Jeremy is extremely aggressive. Anything can set him off. He likes to get right in my face and scream at the top of his lungs and his face is purple and he calls me every filthy name in the book. Stupid. He says I don't deserve any respect. He scares me. A couple weeks ago, I said, could you please feed the dogs? He went ballistic. He started screaming and yelling at me as if he has a schedule. He acts like he has this invisible schedule. Jeremy kind of lays around the house and doesn't really contribute, doesn't do anything. We can kick him out and he comes back. I am at my wit's end. That's why I'm calling Dr. Phil. He's my last chance. He's my last hope. Huh. <laughs> well, you come to the right place. <laughs> Jeremy says his parents should be glad he lives at home. Glad. Because, hey, they're getting old. They need somebody around to take care of them. I can't move out of my parents' home right now because I'm not equipped to take care of myself. I blame my mother for some of the choices she's made that's led my life to where it's at. My life is pretty much a monotony. It's the same thing every day. I don't have any hobbies. There's no typical every day for my life. I tend to want to stay in bed a lot. My parents have probably kicked me out throughout the years maybe half a dozen times. I lived in my car. I stayed with friends or cousins. My parents do push my buttons. We tend to butt heads a lot. The thing that sets my anger off the most is 
say that I never meet them halfway. I don't feel that's true. I feel it's them never meeting me halfway. If it's not exactly the way you guys think, or it's not in tune with exactly how you guys feel or think everything should go, this is what I have to deal with. You guys control everything. Mom needs to stop yelling and getting so angry first. Because if she's angry, if she I gets scared when I get... just a reaction to you. I try to take myself out of the loop as opposed to her. When she gets like that, she seems more combative. She likes to be a little bit more confrontational. She likes to get in everybody's face. While me, I try to stay away. I know that at this age, I should be a little bit more independent, but parents need me around because I've noticed they're getting older. At some point, I'd like to provide and have a family for myself. I haven't really had much of the opportunity to take advantage of things in my life that have come. Everybody's moving by, passing me on. I don't feel it's fair. Okay, this is interesting. They think you're a moocher, are you? No, not a moocher. I, I've never really heard them call me a moocher, per se. Do you contribute financially? Uh, no, no, I don't really make enough to contribute almost anything financially, no. Do you have a job? Yes, I have a job. What do you do? I work distribution and unloading trucks. 40 hours a week, 30 no. hours a week, 20 hours a week, 10 uh, hours a week? It's very nominal. Uh, now it could be anywhere from 12 to 16 hours a week, maybe. Uh, so it's a part-time job? Yeah, right now, yeah. Uh -huh. And you're how old? 32. 32. And you're, you say you're bipolar. Yes. Because I went through all your records and I went through everything you all provided. I couldn't find a diagnosis of bipolar. Well, I was diagnosed manic depressive at one point, so that's always what I was told. Is it so debilitating that you can't clean your room? Um, sometimes, yeah. Well, that's mean, what I'm asking, like what we're oh, seeing here. So, yeah. I told them I didn't want any of that taken. I didn't want any any film of it. I told them, yes, I was honest. That it was oh, a pigsty well, and look, everything. Listen, I, I deal with the truth. If you don't yeah. want to deal with the truth, then don't be here. Because I'm going to talk to them here in a minute. Please do. I'm going to tell them things. Please do. I'm going to ask them questions like I'm asking you. But I help people that want to be helped. And if you don't want to be helped, then don't be here. That's why I'm here. You're not I'd doing like me a favor. Too. But, for instance, uh, the other morning, I came out and expressed that this was moving a little bit fast for me. It blew up to a whole big thing that it didn't need to be to where she ended up calling the police out on me. But why so, did I call them, though? Because you got in my face screaming and yelling. Did I get in your you face? You tried to take the phone away from me. When you were wouldn't trying... Wouldn't let me get on the computer. Was that exactly how it went down? That's exactly how... You're scaring mom. She called me. I had to come home you, from work. You, you got you right to to nose to nose, and you frightened me because you were you were really raging. Do you know why I started doing that? I realized after I talked to the police officer that you were having a panic I attack. I, I want to know why. Well, basically, when I started grabbing the phone, is because at this time, when I started telling her, because it didn't just come out me going into a rage. When I told her that I wasn't feeling this, it was going way too fast, I'm not liking it, I didn't want to go, she's the one. At that point, I realized she had invested everything into this so much so that for to her... For you! I understand that. I'm not saying you don't care. I understand that this is for me, but sometimes you need to back off a little bit and see that I need a little, like, this... The time is up, Jeremy. I mean, I mean the time's we can't been keep up. backing the time's up, been up and me. procrastinating on everything. It's like... Yeah, well, if I had the drive to go any further, I'd really be there because I don't want to be in this situation any more than you guys do. I don't feel like any... There's no drive, okay? There's, there's no, no reason for me to get up. There's nothing like that. That's one of the reasons why you initially called the show, right? right. That is why we're Because we've tried everything we can. We don't know where else to go, what and else to do. And you think I do? He... He can help you. We can't. When this all started transpiring around puberty, you guys always started telling me I was lazy and everything. I'm sorry, I didn't have the answers. But you're 32 school. now. Yeah, I know, but they expect me to already have, like... <laughs> well, no, you're 32 now. That yeah. was then. This is now. Yeah. Okay, let's take a quick break. Next, Kathy and Gary say they don't know where they went wrong as parents. Well, maybe their daughter Tiffany has something that she can add to this. There's two sides to every story. It's going to be heard. We'll be right back. My parents enable my brother. He's 32 years old. He's never left home. My mom cooks the groceries. It's all here for him. If he needs something, you know, toiletries, it's provided here. They kick him out for like a day. I've said don't let him back. But they do. And later... I was prepared for you to come at me like that. And they well, can laugh all they want. They're laughing at the ridiculousness exactly. of the situation. They're, not sitting they're here laughing. In my chair. Do you want to go down there? 
Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. She saw where her grandson was living. Pizza boxes with maggots, bottles with fuzzy mold and nipples. So she became guardian. In two years, you haven't been to see your son? Because I work a lot. Now they want him back. You're saying she tricked you out of the baby. We didn't know that it was permanent custody. Apparently you did. You told your mother. You guys need to go backstage and get your story straight. That's Monday. Jeremy says he's bipolar, depressed, and suffers from a horrific lack of drive for life. His sister Tiffany says he's just using a multitude of excuses as a crutch, and frankly, their parents aren't helping the situation. She says they're as much to blame as he is. I'm 100% fed up with my brother treating my parents the way he does. I don't want to see this cycle continue. My brother's immature. A typical 32-year-old man is not still living at home with no responsibilities. Jeremy's unmotivated, irresponsible, disrespectful. I would never talk to my parents the way he talks to them. My brother can be a taker, and at times he's lazy. It bothers me that he's living here, and even though he doesn't make a lot in his part-time job, he doesn't contribute anything. A normal day for my brother entails getting up whenever he wants to, staying up as late as he wants, eating when he wants, eating as much as he wants here, not cleaning up after himself, going out on cigarette smoke breaks, and being on the computer. He's here, using up the water. He eats them out of house and home. Food's not cheap. My parents enable my brother. He's 32 years old. He's never left home. My mom cooks the groceries. It's all here for him. If he needs something, you know, toiletries, it's provided here. Videos, computer access. I think they need to be stronger and give some tough love. They kick him out for like a day. I've said, don't let him back. But they do. These times when he blows up or when he's not contributing and paying his share, like, sorry. Real life is you might have to be out. Well, Jeremy's family says he gives them every excuse in the book to explain why he can't get his act together and move out. But are they excuses or are they actually valid reasons? Take a look. Jeremy lives in the world of excuses. He's got an excuse for everything, and he accepts no responsibility for anything. Everything is somebody else's fault. My brother is full of excuses. I do believe he has bipolar disorder, but I think he uses it as a crutch and as an excuse to not move forward with his life. I've got issues that are holding me back. My life is crap, and I think a lot of what it has to do with has to be with those choices they made when I was younger. There's so many excuses, I don't even know if I could count them all. His job was going to offer him a promotion, and he had to take a class for some certification. But he was working at night with his job for the early morning hours. My mom has two little dogs, and they bark, so they would keep him up during the night. That caused him to not pass the class, not get the job. There was about eight days where I was unable to get any sleep. I did not pass because I had actually overslept that day. If his car isn't running because he hasn't maintained it, it's the stupid car. I've been letting Jeremy use my car. Jeremy, please don't smoke in my car. Why are there ashes in my car, Jeremy? Well, they must be on my clothes when I get in the car. It'll make your head want to explode. I get exhausted just listening to him. Well, Tiffany, thank you for joining us. Why do you think your brother's still living at home? No no 32-year-old guy wants to live at home with his parents. You don't think he wants... He says he I doesn't want, want this. He says he doesn't. He doesn't want to live He says there. he doesn't, but his actions show differently. Or lack thereof actions. Inaction is an action. Mm -hmm. You're doing nothing to move forward. I don't want to see you at home with mom and dad forever. I don't, I want them to be able to do what they want and not worry about you. When they moved to this new place, they had to worry about... No, they didn't have to, and I told them that. I said, if need be, I would end up the, finding my the, own way. No. That, yeah, that, how? No? How, how the hell is that? No, that is exactly what I told you. you I said, if that's where you guys want to go to that other spot that I'm not allowed have to be at... You the resources. It doesn't you matter. You don't have anything. Well, they worry about that because they okay, love you. Okay, well, then that's not my fault. It is I because you're them. not moving forward and you're not giving them I, peace I of mind. I bought that place outright, so you, when we're gone, if nothing, if, if you're still there, it's at least yours. you have a place. And I appreciate you'd that. Have a I really place do. To live. I think that that's that's very loving of you, and I'm more than appreciative of that. Which is why, as any time you guys want anything done over where, there, I'm willing to help. You know, your right? mom told me one time, I think Jeremy's just going to be with us forever. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And we don't know. Well, what, where is this headed? What, what, what's the what is the outcome here? What what's where are we ten years from now? We might not be around 10 years from now. What? Might not be around 10 years from now. Why would you not be around 10 years from now? 
not really wanting to keep going with this whole lifestyle. Uh, I'm not, I don't know what everybody seems here to think that I'm just in it, trying to sit here. Uh, if, if it was apparent with how unhappy I am, like if I really had the means to get myself going, things would have already been going. There's been setbacks, I've tried everything, but I don't want to be in this, I don't want to be in this position. You, you think I want to be here? I mean, this was, uh, this Jeremy, was the hardest thing for me to come here today. All of us. You keep saying how horrible it is to be here, but am I like an a or something? No, 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 I mean, I don't know too many people, but either well, way, exactly. this is, I mean, it's this like, is there's embarrassing. Like, there's like, there's millions of people watching this. You don't know any of them. There's really no motivation or drive within me. Sometimes I don't want to get out of bed at all. It's very hard to deal with. My parents don't understand, like, when I used to be bedridden, they just said, well, why don't you just get your ass up and do something? Well, that's <laughs> easier said than done, especially when you don't have a motivation for life. You don't really have a want or joy to do anything. It, takes everything from you. My mom says I have a mental disorder. <laughs> you guys said she ripped the wings off of a pet bird. I did not kill my bird. You little witch. Your children have been removed from the home. I'm in Hollywood right now. So how can I worry about my children? I've been worried about your children. Why don't you take them then, little witch? before I hit you on stage. They believe a stranger is obsessed with their twin daughters. She took my photos offline and made up a complete lie of her as their mom. My girls are in picture frames all over her house. How did hundreds of pictures of their twins get on your Facebook page? I honestly don't know. You're a damn liar. You've claimed my girls as your own girls and it's gonna freaking stop. He was a major league pitcher. Now his family says he's a drunk. You've been self-medicating with alcohol because your dream got ripped from you. I'm not a drunker. This is that bottom of the ninth, man. You got to do this. Jeremy's anger is getting worse as he gets older. When Jeremy gets angry, he gets in my face. He likes to get really, really close to me because he knows that, that it intimidates me and frightens me. He blames me. I am a trigger for Jeremy. His mood swings are a puzzle to us. One day he could be one of these rages. We're no good. We don't know what we're doing. He screams and yells. And then the next day it might be over and he wakes up and, hi, Mom, I love you, Mom. Like, almost like it didn't happen. To me, it's like a very bad domestic abuse situation, only it's mother and son. My greatest fear is that I'm getting older and weaker, and Jeremy's young and strong, and I'm afraid he might kill me. All these things I'm now seeing on the camera, none of you guys have expressed any of this I to me openly. This. And I, no. We walk on eggshells around you because you'll blow up, and why I don't yeah, confront you, you do is because you live these. with no, mom and I you have guys to protect up. them. Jeremy, you, have you do blow up. Years past when have I, ever I was hurt a you younger guys? woman no. and so have I ever? Don't, but you, you blow and I up. used to go at it full tilt. I don't do it anymore because I'm trying to defuse your rage. I, even when I don't give it back to you, you don't defuse. You you just get worse. It's, it's like you don't have an off. And I'm butt. scared of you, Jeremy. I'm scared older. Of when that's, I'm, that's what I'm worried your rage about. Frightens me. When you're at home with mom and their own, when dad and I are at work, and, and it's I've always, always when always he's been gone. gone. It's, yeah. But when you I'm scare her. If you guys want me out, say so and I'll be out. No. That's, that's We've all done that before. It. We don't want to throw you out on the street. We want you to. We want to help you move on with your life. Funny here. You don't get that? No, I do get that. The, the good news is... <laughs> there is good news here. This, the good news for you is this is not a Jeremy problem. This is a family problem. Right. That's why we're all and, here. And what you are is the squeaky wheel. You also blow up and you, you yell and scream and, and scare her. And uh, I know she does the same thing and she argues with you, but you're a 32-year-old man. You don't scream at a woman like that. That's not okay. I don't care whether you live at home or you don't live at home. That's not okay. I don't care. So, and you do that, correct? Sometimes, yes. Yeah, that's not all right. You need to stop doing that. I, I, I know what's wrong with him. I know how to fix his issue. 
That's low-hanging fruit. I, I know how to change this. <laughs> Seriously, that's a, that's a fixable problem. What I don't get is, what the hell is wrong with you people? <laughs> really? I, I really don't understand what is wrong with you. Why, you well, we don't either. That's why we're You here. were going to move sure into a retirement place, and you didn't because you couldn't take him with you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because we didn't know what would happen to him. We didn't want him to be out on the streets with no... They won't do the tough love. They will With not do no it. means of support. I knew you were going to say that to us, and I was prepared for you to come at me like that. And they well, can laugh all they want, no, but if they were in our situation, I want to see which one of those mothers wouldn't do the same thing. I, maybe there's some of you that would do tough love and throw your kids out, they, you but I want to see how... I don't know them. Talk to me, not them. They don't get a but vote. But they're laughing. <laughs> They're laughing at the ridiculousness exactly. of the situation. They're, not sitting they're here laughing. In my chair. Do you want to go down there? No. Then, then talk to me. I am talking to you. Y'all talk. You, I, we go through tens of thousands of letters. You kick, fight, scratch to get here and then complain about the no. chair. No, 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 no. no not no, at all. Not. This guy does not want to be in the situation he's no, he in. He doesn't. He didn't want to be. If you, do you not think he would like to be making a good income, living in a nice apartment with a good car and a couple of girls on this on the Of course he would. <laughs> you know, he, he doesn't want to be living with his mother and dad, for God's sakes. He wants what you want for him. He just doesn't know how to get there. Inertia is a tendency for bodies at rest to remain at rest. Right. So he's stuck in this situation. You want out of this, right? Yeah. It, it, but oh, take a break. <laughs> Coming up, Kathy says that... Kathy and Gary say Jeremy is the reason they were forced to give up their dream home and move into a mobile home. I say that is bizarre. I, I don't get that. So what are we going to do? We're going to talk about that when we come back. When we decided to downsize, we originally were looking for a retirement community 55 plus. You couldn't bring Jeremy. Thursday, Nick Gordon returns. Where you left money in the will by Whitney. Photos surfaced of Chrissy smoking out of a bong and snorting cocaine. Did she have a drug problem? Yeah, it got really bad. Were you a bad influence on her? They say he punched her in the face and kicked her to the point she was on the floor screaming and you dragged her up the stairs by her head. And the one question everyone wants answered. Did you murder Bobby Christina Brown? That's Thursday. On our 25th wedding anniversary, we went to Las Vegas. He brought homeless people in. A woman and her kids walking by the house. They slept on my brand new furniture. I found out some guy was there. He had a a gun in his backpack, and Jeremy was in his room most of the time. So they were roaming around our home. He didn't see anything wrong with that. Jeremy, let me let me ask you, that I got the same questions for you. What do you want? Purpose in a family. Uh -huh. And by purpose, what would that? Something to give me drive, something to motivate me. And when we talk to you, you've you did blame choices your parents made earlier in your life and really even up until somewhat recently uh, until recently on your parents mm -hmm. do you want my input here sure you know this is the first show in the history of television that's ever been completely devoted to psychological issues and family functioning and all of that it's the first time anybody's ever done that and lo and behold, it's a number one show. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> so I put this down because I wanted you to see it. Because mm -hmm. when you see it, sometimes it has an effect. Like you say, this is your words. These aren't our words. These are your words. Well, to some extent, yeah. I'm, I'm re reading them now, and some of them aren't, aren't all that accurate. That's just the way they ended up making them concise. Mm -hmm. Okay. No life goes or motivation. And you say a big problem is... The bipolar and depression, and that is a factor. I don't disagree with that one. That is a factor, and it needs to be managed. And if that's the case, then we're going to work on that. Thank you. Has to live at home because you frankly can't afford to live somewhere else. Correct. That's shorthand, but yeah. okay. 
You stopped counseling for depression because you didn't like the counselor, the last no. one that you saw. Uh, that was that might have been a long time ago. The first one we saw, okay. but no, that wasn't the case. <laughs> okay. You stopped no. prescription meds because they didn't work. Correct. Okay. You can't leave the house because you don't have a car. You can't go out job hunting because you don't have good transportation. No, my, my car actually runs. The thing is, is I have problems with the rotors and brakes to where they don't want me driving it because they, th they feel it's unsafe, which is why, in turn, they let me use their car. You can't drive an unsafe car, Jack. Why can't I drive it? Because it's unsafe. unsafe. Says you, but I'm the one who drives it. You're the one who says it's unsafe because it makes a little noise. Who doesn't okay. drive a car that okay. makes noise? You, you quit jobs because you felt overworked? No, there was a job in question that they're probably referencing that to, to where I had worked 13 days. This was a long, long time ago. This was one of the second, I think the second job I had when I was a busboy. I had worked like 13 straight days or whatever towards the end, and I was pretty much, yeah, I got, I got fed up with them. Okay, no girlfriend in 10 years because your mom kind of wrapped that one well, up for you. That's not the reason why I haven't had it, because she ruined the relationship. I just haven't had a girlfriend in 10 years. That's not because she ruined the last one, though. Okay, can't contribute financially because you work limited hours. Correct. How about getting a, different, a, a second job? Well, I haven't, that's the motivation factor I'm lacking. I haven't really wanted to look. The last time I tried looking for work, it took me quite a few years to find something. In the meantime, I was taking care of my grandmother at that time, which okay, is Okay, really remember what he just said, okay? Okay, can't get job making more money because mom's fault he didn't finish school. Again, that's not really accurate. The, the reason I had a promotion that was almost set up for me where I was taking classes for a certification, she had just recently lost her job and was depressed at the time. There's a little bit more backstory to it. She wouldn't get up answering the door. There were family members coming by to check on her. They're knocking on the door, loud as can be. You're right in the living room watching TV, but oblivious to the door. The dogs are barking. You're still not getting up saying anything. I'd have about 10 minutes sitting there listening to this while I'm trying to rest that I'd finally just get up, you know, a little bit like angry and say, you know what, answer the door. But then at that point, I can't go back to sleep. What time of day was that? During the middle of the day. During the day. People come to houses Right, the but if she's it home, it well, don't midnight. act surprised. It doesn't matter. She's home. I'm okay. supposed to be trying to but sleep. But I got you the got... back story now. You said you failed the job placement test because your mom's dog was barking that's and disturbed your about. sleep before the test. That, yeah, that's, that's actually what I was referring to. The yeah. Whole time. But it wasn't, it wasn't just that cut and dry. That makes it look like it's just some asinine thing, but that wasn't the case at all. Oh, my God. Did you just say what I thought you said? Did you just say that? I did. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. She's disgusted with where her grandson was living. Maggots, bottles with fuzzy mold. It wasn't that nasty. Do you think those pictures were staged? I do. Oh, my God. Monday. You can't move out because they need you at home. Well, they kind of do now here and there. They, they, there's a lot of work that needs Could to be you done on the place. Please give him permission <laughs> to not be responsible for you too. Yeah, Jeremy, you don't have to be at home. Okay, I'm not saying I have to. You're be. There. I think I would leave, but you guys do kind of need me there if you want a lot of that repair work. No, then. <clears throat> I can do that. No. Or you can come over and help. Or oh, my God. Or Did you just say outside what outside. I thought you said? <laughs> Did you just mitigate what well, I said? He thinks he needs to be. The reason that he's staying at home is because he thinks you need him to fix things around the house. No, and I said, give him permission that he doesn't need to be there. And you said, no, you don't need to be there. Well, you could come over and fix stuff. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Did you just say that? I did. We want him to have a life of his own. Apparently not. You see why we need your help, Dr. Phil. Life is a mess oh, because Lord. universe dealt a bad hand, can't control anger because parents won't listen, blows up at mom because she loves sister more than him. And Jeremy, do you really believe that last one? That I love no, but I do feel well, then she's kind of got. Why did you got, say something like that? She has kind of got a little bit more of the opportunity. No, she and it's hard. took advantage of the opportunity. Because she's the perfect child. Her, yes, we understand she's not that. She's perfect. None of us are perfect. Somewhere we went wrong, and we don't know where. We where. don't know what. We don't know where. Listening. Somewhere. Some, we don't know what happened. <laughs> we went wrong. We don't know where. Baby, trying to put me in the same path she went. To motivate you to make something We're out of yourself. We're two completely different people. 
at what point do you become accountable? I'm always accountable. I tell them if they want me out, all they got to do is tell me and I will go. He does I, say that, but we don't know how he'll support himself. That's why we're here, because they won't. No, they have before. No, and they don't let you stay out. Well, yeah. Try living we on your own your for 11 account. months. Desperately. When you don't have the means to? <clears throat> I made decisions to not get myself right. in that position. Mm -hmm. When you're gone, Jeremy, if, when that happens, yes, that's real privilege, then your huh? mom is fretting. Where, where is he? What's happening? That's not my concern, is then, both? is it? No, I'm talking about your mom. <clears throat> that's why, you know, I always give in. Because I don't eat, that, I don't sleep, I'm sick. I make myself sick. Mm -hmm. I know I know I'm enabling, I know I'm wrong. I I, I need And she can't stand I it. I need your help. So. I can't. I know a lot of it is my fault. I understand that. I just don't know what to do. If I if we make him leave as we have in times past, I can't make it stick because She's He's terrified out on the that street. something's going to happen. I'm terrified to something bad's going to happen to him. Do, do you threaten him with that? No, I don't threaten him with that, but I mean... At well, you just made a veiled threat a few minutes ago. It's emotional extortion. Maybe so, but that's... Well, that's really manipulative. The... I mean, you made a okay, veiled well, threat. Then... You said, well, I may not even be here. And you have said that to me yeah, numerous times. that was times. one of the reasons you really started going on the show, because I do feel that way. I don't have a drive. I don't, I don't feel any... I don't know where to go with anything. I don't know how to get my first foot forward. I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm at a complete loss. I'm going to tell these people the truth as I see it. And we'll see who wants to make a change and who doesn't. We'll be right back. We have a lot of fun here in the studio audience. If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click be in the audience. Or you can call 323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445. Look, Jeremy, your, your parents are not perfect, um, but you're not a perfect son. <laughs> Far from it. That has kind of a symmetry to it, doesn't it? Yeah. L listen, Kathy, Gary, I want you to do something for me. Okay. Both of you come with me. Now, yeah. you see this? Okay. It starts at zero. Mm-hmm. And think about this as your life timeline. God. And I want you to come stand on your age. Oh, in front of everybody? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Stand on your age. Okay. You uh, happy we're, now? We're right. I want you to look over your shoulder and see how much is behind you. Wow. Quite a bit. Now look how much is ahead of you. Yeah. Well, hopefully it'll go past the end of that. Yeah, hopefully, my ass, this is... <laughs> this That's is life right. expectancy. I don't like this. Now, you want to spend this the way you're spending it now? No. No. Not at all. Think about this. That's it. That's behind you. That's ahead of you. Burn this in your brain. Because you don't want to be down here... Saying, you know, that day we went on Dr. Phil, he tried to tell us, don't waste this, and we didn't listen. Okay. Let me make these wonderful okay. years. In front of us before. You've earned them. That's what I see. That's what I'm worried about. I know. So let's make a change. Okay. Please. Let's make a change. Are you willing to work with us on making this change? Of course. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. Because I want to get you the help that you need. I want to get you a life coach. Oh my. I want to get you a therapist. I want to get you evaluated biochemically, <laughs> neurologically, to see exactly where you are. That's our gift to you. Let's find out where we are. I'm going to suggest that we start with you going to a place that I love called OnSite. And it's in Tennessee. 
And I've, I've talked to Miles Adcox about this. On-site is a trusted resource for very intense interventions and, and workshops on getting people really focused on action plans to mobilize their life. So let's do it. Fair enough? I'm all for it. And we'll be behind there? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right, a special thanks to OnSite, because I talked to Miles about this. When we come back, why a very successful model and entrepreneur wandered the streets of New York City for 17 hours. Was she really lost, or was there something else going on? We'll hear her story after the break. Ready to get real? Go to DrPhil.com for advice on relationships, parenting, finances, and more. Plus, weigh in on your favorite episodes, share your stories, and find support in the Dr. Phil community. When you sign up for the community, you will automatically be subscribed to the Dr. Phil Show newsletter. Log on to DrPhil.com today. My next guest is a well-known supermodel, celebrity chef, restaurateur, and lifestyle expert. Nothing slipped by her until one day the news came. She was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. With the help of her husband, Dan, she is determined to stay happy. Here's her story. If you have Alzheimer's, it doesn't just go away. Um, uh, it's a tough but you know, it's tough, but it's not the worst thing that can happen. You expect and always think that the person will operate at their zenith. Especially B, who has the abilities to do so many different things over the course of her life. In the beginning, when it was, you know, starting to happen with me, I, I didn't get it. I have a true rock. My best friend. <laughs> when you think about Alzheimer's, we got to put a line in the sand and make a difference. I believe in the, the one rule. If it could help one person, then it's worthwhile. Well, joining me is B. Smith, her husband, Dan, along with my good friend, Dr. Frida Lewis-Hall, Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer. So welcome, everyone. Thank you. This is my new best friend. Well, well she's, let me tell you, <laughs> she is our best friend as well. We just love it when she is here. So, B, what is the most difficult thing for you in your daily life? The most difficult in my daily life? Um, I have a tendency of sometimes doing a little too much. <laughs> and Sweetie has a problem at times. She, you know, remembering things, which is right. part of uh, the journey that we're on. Dr. Freer, what does it mean when you're diagnosed with Alzheimer's? Being diagnosed with Alzheimer's means you've been diagnosed with the most common form of dementia that you're likely to experience, as Dan mentioned, memory loss, uh, loss of thinking and language ability, changes in personality and mood, and that that is severe enough that it has an impact on your ability to manage your daily tasks. It also means that you've been diagnosed with a disease that is both progressive and irreversible. Mm -hmm. Are there things that trigger this? We really don't understand the cause completely yet. What we do believe is that genetics is at play, and we believe that because we know that people who have parents or siblings with Alzheimer's, they're more likely to get it. Yeah, are there other risk factors besides the genetics? There are two major risk factors. The first is age and the second is gender. So if you take 85-year-olds, for example, one in three persons at that age have Alzheimer's. Oh, really? And the risk is higher for women. About two-thirds of the people that have Alzheimer's are women. Is that right? Yes. What's been the scariest moment? The scariest moment for, for me was a normal bus trip that my wife would take from our home into Manhattan and she got off the stop before the last stop before I would meet her. And for 17 hours, she walked up and down the streets of Manhattan in 35 plus degree weather while it was raining, sleeting, and snowing. Wow. Unbelievable. Doctor, what are some of the warning signs? Memory loss and personality changes, poor judgment, forgetting things, asking the same questions 
over and over and over again. Will you see mood changes as well? Many times you see mood changes and what we call mood liability, feeling happy at one moment and then changing very quickly. Well, being a caregiver certainly can be tough. So what should people in that role do? So caregiving is, is really tough. So the first thing is keep tapping into courage, to faith, to love, mm -hmm. to patience. A lot of times caregivers feel that they should do everything and they feel guilty if they don't. Yes. They have to take care of themselves. That is so very important. Ask others around them for help. That's critical. And then the third thing, make sure you stay on top of new advances Absolutely. Um, in the disease around uh, new research, new management, new resources. All of those things are important to really uh, stay in pace with. And of course, we say that there's a good start to get that information on gethealthystayhealthy.com. I want to add one other thing because we didn't really talk about this. We have to have people more aware. We have to have people involved in clinical trials. It's really important. I just want to congratulate them for picking that up on top of everything else that Thank they're dealing with. Dr. Phil, I've learned people need to talk to people that getting advice or counseling or therapy is not something to, to shy away from or to be shunned. That's what Alzheimer's is for many people. The only way that we can make this thing go away is by talking about it and not being ashamed mm -hmm. of something you have no control over. Yeah. And B, you're completely comfortable talking about it, right? I am. Um, I'm not quite sure why, yeah. but um, for, for years, you know, I've done all the things that I'm doing now. Right. And uh, I still want to go out and help, and help other people. Yeah. And I've, I'm, I'm still doing it. Yeah. Well, you two wrote a book about your true love, family, dedication, yes. and hope. And it's creating awareness of Alzheimer's with the goal to one day beat this deadly disease. We can, and we will. And uh, we want everyone in the audience to get a chance to read it for themselves. It's called Before I Forget. And everyone in the audience is going to go home with a copy of um, Dan's book. So congratulations on that, and thank you for taking the time to do that. And you should be really proud of this book, B. I, I mean, I, I really I hope am. you are. I really hope you are. Um, I want to thank all of my guests today, especially Dr. Frieda Lewis Hall. We'll see you next time. And thanks so much. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much.